Well, hello, Nick. You remember this tune? Yeah, Wrecker, my brother, the famous Dr. Decade. The famous Dr. Decade, and he's he's telling us it's a what season, it's Christmas, the year is year is ending. Um, it's time for some reflection, and of course, for our very, very important this IS research awards. Did you know that they are legitimate? Did you know that? Like truly what? legitimate in your institutional sense? What? Well, last year in the, you know the last December episode, we we handed out uh, the Trailblazing Award, I think, and the Innovative Innovative Research Method Award, and they come with with plaques and they're in frames, and we posted them, etc. And what I learned this year <laughs> is that uh, one of the recipients actually the the faculty made a big booha out of it and said, "Wow, you got this really prestigious award. We should put it on into a news channel and you know and have a bit of, of a ceremony about it." And I was like, "Wow, this is this is great. So our award is is a thing now. It's a symbol. It's legitimate. <laughs> we institutionalized uh, our award as the best paper awards. Well, and it's this very rigorous process. So what do we do for our awards? We ask all our friends to send us uh, their favorite papers. And we look at all the papers they send us. And yeah. then we also look at some of the other papers that we know. And then Absolutely. we, so it's a completely scientific process. But then we we end up with dozens and dozens of papers we're weeding through. And uh, and yeah, so we're going to do that today, right? We're going we to will. have a our, our annual awards show. Absolutely. But before we get to that, um, I mean, it's also the end of the calendar year. It's the end of our fourth season. Uh, I forgot counting, but I think we're we're hitting fifty plus episodes now. And Spotify Rap told me we created like you know so and so many hundreds of hours of content. Yeah, it's crazy wow. if you think about it. The way that I think about it actually is, you know, we could have written the paper instead. That's what I'm thinking. Like, written look multiple at the effort, papers. You yeah. think so? Like at least one paper we could have worked on instead of this. And tell you what, I'm so glad we we did this instead of writing yet another paper. <laughs> Well, you have so many papers. Do you really need another one? I mean, every what? other day you have another Wrecker paper. I certainly do not. Like, no. You're I always third not. author, though, so it's never Wrecker at all. It's someone else, and then Wrecker's <laughs> in the at all. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I have pe people write papers, and I'm just forcing my name onto them because I'm just stronger than most people that I work. You with. put your name on punch, it. Yeah. I punch them in the face. All right, That's dude. Awful. Uh, in December, I usually look. You didn't go to ISIS. I didn't end up going to ISIS either. So we were both sitting and everybody else had apparently a great time, which is good. You know, it was apparently yeah. a really good success. Everyone got together and was really happy. I sort of had a little bit of a FOMO, fear of missing out. Um, on the other hand, I was actually quite happy to be at home here. Um, for there a were a lot of fun things. <laughs> I think uh, I got a bunch of uh, pictures from people, you know, usually when they were drinking and doing a selfie, which makes me think that, you know, when they're drinking, they think of me. I wonder, wonder what that says about me. And then <laughs> apparently the best party at ISIS this year in Copenhagen was Taufik Elishor put on an after party one of the oh, nights geez. and it went on until three o'clock in the morning oh, and I'm not going to name names, but many senior people who we love and respect and wouldn't think would be out until three in the morning were indeed out until three in the morning. So <laughs> I love it. I mean, that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. So I, I do, I do, I do miss that. We haven't been there. I the, the funny stories that I heard was Stefan, our good friend, Stefan, who we mentioned quite a lot on this podcast. He called me up today and said like, Man, Jan, people came to talk to me about the podcast, and I was like, "Why? You're, <laughs> you you haven't been on the show?" And and he said, "Well, no, but apparently everyone knows me, no, because you guys keep talking about me." <laughs> well, that's our buddy. That's who brought us together, really, and in, in a sense, isn't it? Yeah, or not even in a sense. In reality, he brought us together. He said, "You he guys did. should he, uh, quite yeah. literally." Uh, he did, yeah, absolutely. We were playing yeah. pool. He brought us together with Sean Hansen and some other playing pool, and that's when you and I met, right? I think I beat you like a drum in pool, Fort. I don't remember Fort Worth, that. Texas. Yeah. Could be, could be. Um, so what I did, Nick, I wanna, I wanna do something different now. I want, I prepared five questions, all right, and I want to ask you five questions, and if you want, you can hear what I, what my answers to these five questions would be, and we're just gonna You're prepared. Shoot yeah, I prepared a little bit. Uh, you don't you don't have to think too deeply about them, right? But they're all about you all right. know your 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 year twenty two in retrospect, your professional year, of course, right? So I'm just going to shoot a few questions out, right? So, what's the best paper you've read this year? Now, this doesn't have to be a twenty twenty two paper. Just this entire year, what's the paper that you've read that you enjoyed reading the most? 
All right, you didn't prepare me for this. I have to oh, think. Yeah. Um, uh, well, man, all right, tell me what your best paper you read yeah. this year was, and then I have to think. Next time, prepare. Send me these questions to me ahead of time, so I because well, the I have whole point to... of these questions is that you know you're not preparing. So for me. It's that's why I said it doesn't have to be a 22 pay, 2022 paper. So for me, earlier this year, we did this global um, digital innovation PhD seminar, right, where a bunch mm -hmm. of different faculty did a session each. You did one on institutional logics, or institutional theory and digital innovation. And this is when I actually really read for the first time Maya and Rowan. And that's okay, gonna yeah. be that's gonna be my the the best paper I've read this year. I have to admit, like I'm, I told you before, I'm probably not gonna become an institutionalist, but boy, did I like that paper, and it really resonated really, really well. It was a very good paper. It's from what 1977 or something. Yeah, 1977, Meyer and Rowan, and really all of my work is kind of a footnote on that paper. That paper said it all, as far as I'm concerned, as far as. Uh, Kind of the institutional perspective, and yeah, yeah and that so that's tells a, great a lot about one. the, the influence. It. Yeah, exactly, the influence that you've had on on my work. Uh, you know, at the very least, this year also says a lot about this paper. This is my uh, the best paper I've read this year. All right, so I'm not going to say the best because I I can't think. You put me on the spot, but I will say my favorite thing that I've read this year, and uh, you know, I don't know if this if you're gonna, but. I read uh, Francis Bacon's The New Organon, right? I was teaching a philosophy of science class and I've never gone back and read it. And I had to read it and read around it to our, to our new PhDs. And I just felt like, wow, he wrote this in, I don't even know when he wrote it, but at the beginning of the Enlightenment. And I think he was really foreshadowing issues that are relevant right now in experimental method and in inference from data. And it's like, we can take his uh, his assumptions. I wasn't prepared for this question, but the moment you asked me that question, I'm thinking what impacted my brain uh, the most? And I would say uh, the thing I was happy about reading was uh, Francis Bacon's The New- Sir Francis Argonaut, Bacon, so. right? He got, he, he got knighted, didn't he? Yeah, he must have, but you know, he I was, he so. kind of ushered in the enlightenment and, and uh, an experimental method. And, you know, this year, because of Taufik, I've been doing experiments and I love experimental method. I've been doing online experiments. I'm thinking about experiments and, and yeah. So I guess the thing that I read that impacted my thinking the most was that. So maybe a little sidetrack. I don't want to delve into this, but since we talked about the, the most impressive thing we've read, the most impressive thing I've listened to this year was actually at that little workshop in Case Western um, that you know you got you guys organized with the young gen organized yeah with yeah, us, the young yeah. gen organized and uh, your your good friend Ahmed was there and he talked about um, you know online A B testing in real practice and the sheer volume of it all that mm -hmm. at any given point when we enter Amazon or something and we are online in a session there's several thousand experiments being done in parallel that puts a whole new strain on the experimental method. That was just mind boggling to me. Really fascinating. Yeah. I hope at some stage, you know, this, this hits the public. Well, we should bring him, we, we should bring him on the podcast Absolutely. when that paper gets published. I know it's in yeah. upper rounds, but he goes back to Fisher. Fisher was one of the, he's yeah. kind of the, the guy who started random assignment and experiments. Exactly. He, well, he goes back to the arch architectural, uh, sorry, the agricultural experiment. Yeah. And I'm and that Fisher was Fisher from the 1920s. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So no, his presentation is phenomenal. Uh, and yeah, the paper is very cool and it's, it's, uh, it's remarkable. So we should we should get him on and we should talk about his ideas there when when the paper is published. That's a good idea. All right, Nick. Next question. Shoot from the hip. Uh, what's your personal professional highlight? What was that in 2022? Oh, that's easy. I became a full professor at the oh, Notre okay. at Notre Dame's Mendoza College of Business. Right. I, I got uh, I've reached the the pinnacle of my career. Right. A full professor. Before this, I was an associate professor. Oh wait, so, you got yeah. like twenty years left. What are you going to do next? I mean, this is going to be boring. Well, I think I'm going to. I have never written a book. Yeah, fair enough. All right, so I plan to write a book or two. Maybe you, my friend, you and I, my friend, can can write a book at some point in the future. Uh, I love your book, the uh, the uh, the research, the how, how to do research. Yeah, that's a very nice book. It's useful. I actually find myself looking at it every once in a while. Um, really? I took a picture of it and put it on Twitter, and then I put it next to my desk at work, and then it sits there. And every once in a while, especially with the experience, I think, all right, what did Wrecker say? And I look at it. <laughs> Wow. You usually have a very pithy one page, uh, you know, a s summary of whatever it is I'm looking for. Right. I and then, of course, weird, I have to. Yeah. 
I have to go look at the original sources yeah, because you exactly. like to spend a, a couple sentences on each idea. You know, really, I do. Yeah. I do broad brushing. I do very much yeah. broad brushing. I have a very uh, weird paradoxical relationship to that book. It's it's. I think it's very useful and it's very superficial at the same time. <laughs> you know, it has to. It has to at that text for that level. It has to. Uh, you know, tell you what, I use it in in bachelor and early masters uh, level courses, like really intro level stuff. I've been a professor for over a decade and uh, I still find value in it. So there's something there. And if nothing else, just kind of locate you, and especially in the areas you're not usually familiar with. All right. What about you? Personal highlight. Well, personal highlight. I mean, I, I have to say, well, I have to say I was I was really proud when our Oak Science paper came out. I was really proud yeah. of that. Uh, yeah, it's a nice paper. It's a nice paper. It's a different paper. It was a, a vividly remember after round one, you know, after the f initial round of uh, feedback, we said, what are we going to do? Are we going to go big or go home? You know, we said yeah. like, well, go big or go home or do whatever else they are actually asked us to do. And we said, now nah, let's not do that. Let's go big or go home. And we went big and it was really risky and so forth. And, and it became a really nice paper that led to a lot of follow on work as well. And, it, you know, it's uh yeah, uh, no. I don't know. For someone like me with the tr sort of training and background that I have, getting into oxides science is, is, is quite special. So for me personally, I was uh, quite proud of that. And that's a great paper. We should we should do an episode on that paper and some of the directions the paper can take us because uh, because it is really cool. And what's interesting is a lot of our friends, when we ask them, and when I say our friends, we sent a note out to probably 50 different people and got dozens and dozens of papers back. Uh, as award candidates, yeah. As exactly. award candidates. And a number of them mentioned that paper you have with, with Young Jen and Brian. So yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, I was quite proud of that too. <laughs> that's yeah. sort of people that are respect they actually nominated uh, some of that work um, but of course we are not going to give ourselves no, awards no, so no, we immediately absolutely. disqualified that one yeah i have a, i have another sound note here so yeah we're not gonna give awards to ourselves first second we, we received a few self nominations now mm -hmm. that's completely fine and valid but to be honest i would never do that would you ever self nominate i guess uh, not no no it's, it's mm -hmm. a weird thing, right? I, there's nothing wrong asked, with it. If I you guess, remember, but... yeah, if you remember our note, we yeah. said self nominations are welcome. Uh, so yeah. with that, we were we were asking for it, you know. So True. Yeah. Yeah. all right, Nick. Question number three. Now let me see. Where's question number three? You forgot your question. I thought you prepared. See, you're no, full I, of I, it. I can't read my handwriting. That's all. Right. So, what are you working on right now that you're most excited about? Right now. Oh. What am I working on right now that I'm most excited about? You know, all right. So I was teaching three classes this semester. So I'm backlogged on all my papers. And what I'm really excited about, and this probably isn't what you were asking, uh, is to get my backlog uh, yeah, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Out, out the door. Uh, as far as new projects I'm working on, I guess we have three new PhD students and they're all doing these online experiments. And, and I'm very excited about seeing them go from zero, you know, to, to actually having data, analyzing the data and writing little papers. So uh, hopefully we'll be expanding these experiments and doing interesting things with them. But I guess the most exciting thing for me is a as a professor and as a teacher is to see what they're doing, right? And to see them learning and getting better than me very quickly in the experimental method, which is hilarious. Isn't it funny? Like, that's, a, <laughs> that's a great way to put it. Like, I, 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 like the best thing I would always hope for is that I get to teach someone that very, very quickly outpaces it and just, out oh. it just like outperforms myself. That would, that's just such, such a great thing to, yeah. to have, you know, yeah. uh, I think. How about you? What are you working on right now that you're very excited about? Other than the project with me and young Jan and Brian. That, that is good uh, fun. Is and it, to your I'm getting more and more excited because now it's taking shape and it looks yeah. solid. And it's one of these really weird things where we spend two years of talking and then at some stage it really takes shape. Uh, you know, yeah. and that's that's good. That's the, the one that I like a lot at the moment is just simulation work, man. I mean, I yeah. think this this Oak Science paper really got me started. I'm working with a great team of non-IS people. Mm -hmm. um, and what we're doing is we we've been revising and revising and revising, uh, working on basically trying to simulate um, Youngjin's idea of digital first. That's in a nutshell. I don't want to give too much away, but um, mm. uh, with really cool simulation models, and that just be a really nice little research note. 
you know like it's a yeah. but I, I really love it it's so cool it's 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 got this uh it's got this computational side to it it's got this analytical it's v- simulation i think is very theoretical work you got to be really okay. on your on your game with concepts and measures and and you know and metrics and stuff like that you do um, it's storytelling right it's storytelling exactly. and then what's yeah. what's the ramifications of my story right yeah exactly right so otherwise because otherwise it's just a bunch of numbers um yeah, so I'm, I'm quite excited about this, uh, but that'll that'll keep us busy for a while. All right, yeah. uh, and next question. What's the tuss, toughest bump on the road you've experienced this year? You know, we talked about our episode on resilience. I talked about, you said that, well, there's no, there's no failure. It's only bumps on the road. There's only momentary setbacks. What's the biggest momentary setback you've had this year? This has been a really great year. I mean, so I, I'm not going to say these a couple of rejections or a couple of really challenging revisions because that's every year, right? I I always have those. You always get your little heart broken by something you love getting rejected or or uh, or they or or they revise. They ask you to revise it and they revise it in such a way that uh, it really has nothing to do with the original submission, you know. Uh, actually, so that's probably my my number one uh, challenge. I'm working with someone who's kind of a more junior professor, has brilliant ideas, doing really cool stuff. And then the revision we got back, we got a revision at a good journal. And the revision we got back is basically eliminating the things that we uh, loved and that yeah. we know are interesting and unique and instead go this other route. And of course, the junior researchers, like I get a chance to revise for a top journal, so I'll go this other route, right? So we're going the route that wasn't our original intention. And it it breaks my heart a little because I'm not the biggest fan of this new in this new direction. And uh, and I really wish we would have been able to I'm, push I'm with the- you on this one, man. This, this goes back to my, my issue with developmental reviewing. I mean, dev- yeah. it's all fine, but sometimes... And too often, in my view, we are just taking papers away from the authors and make them go in a direction that we, as editor reviewers, think is more publishable. But it's actually not what we wanted to say, you know. Yeah. And then exactly what you just said happens. It's like, oh, oh well, let's do that then, you know. Like yeah. let's do this other thing instead, because apparently I can get this as a PDF on this journal's web page. Well, you know, that shouldn't be. How, that's not how it should be. That's that's yeah. my issue, right? And it's a little bit systemic, I think, in that in that you can't blame the reviewers because they're trying to be good reviewers, and that means they're trying to be developmental, and the editors are trying to be developmental. Everyone tries to be nice, but you know, it's not really yeah. what it should be. I so, think. so I just gave a desk revision to a paper that uh, I did the same thing that perhaps this senior editor is guilty of doing. Although I, of course, being on the author side, know exactly that I, I was fine to begin with, right? But in this particular one, the way I look at it is I basically told them, it's a desk revision, I told them do a much different paper, right? Because this one, I'm not going to publish in in MIS Quarterly. Um, and the much different paper is indeed a much different paper. And I told them which direction to go and that if they did that, I would consider it. So here's the deal. I look at it from an editor standpoint of, hey, if it was the old paper you sent, reject. Here's an idea. If you want to try it, I'll consider it no promises in the future. I'm basically just giving them an opportunity. They can take it or not, right? And uh, and the problem is, though, if it's a junior professor and this and a hit here could make your or a junior researcher, a hit here could make their career or at least contribute dramatically to their career. Yeah. Uh, they'll go in the direction I'm sending them, right? And then that becomes developmental, which I didn't really intend it to be developmental. I'm just like, hey, I'm not accepting your paper. <laughs> If you want to say what you want to say, you're not in. However, here's the thing I think you can say uh, with your, you know, approach. With your and your data. With your, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so so I, I feel I understand where the senior editor is coming from. Um, if it were just me without the junior person, I would probably be like, yeah, I don't want to write that paper. But since uh, this junior person's with me, it would matter so much. Then I'm like, all right, I'll support it and, and go in that direction. You know. All right. You want to hear mine? I have yes. two different ones. So one of them is really this, it was tough, a uh, bump on the road, these late stage rejection. I got a few this year, several second, third or fourth round rejections, which are tough yeah. to take. Fourth round, if it's third round or fourth round rejection, it's no longer, it's the editor's fault. I mean, come on, never. Anything after third round is just like- Well, fair uh, enough. Criminal. You could say this, 
But I, I also have to be very honest. Like I, I see why they're doing this now. And I see from the edit editor's point of view, I get it. Um, you know, so that's one thing. That's not the point I wanted to make. So that was a, a tough one. It was tougher in both of these cases. These, I was working with junior tenure track assistant, you know, professor guy. That it's pretty shattering for them. Make no mistake about it, right? Yeah. It was pretty. Yeah. It's, it's these things are tough to take. So I'm, I'm mentioning this here on air because I, I shared this story with a few uh, postdocs and sort of you know early research at a workshop, and they they were like, "Man, Jan, it's so good to hear that you also get these or something, right?" So it's good to speak about this. So yeah. I got a fair few of them this year and they're tough to take uh, now with a month or two afterwards, I get it. And I, you know, I see, and I see the point that they're having could have, could have been done earlier. Yeah, probably, you know, but I, I get it. So that's one thing. I What's the to most say. rounds you've ever gotten a rejection in? I think fifth round that's a, but I was a second year PhD or third year PhD student. I remember that one, but it, that was good. Fifth round. Sixth, GIS rejection. sixth round rejection. I got a sixth round rejection at ISR. Yeah, I, I know this story. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, well, but in your case, and in my case as well, I had fifth round JIS, I think. In both of these cases, the paper that eventually got published became quite, you know, well published and, and, and impactful or something. Yours did and mine did as well. So, you know, this is just how it goes sometimes. So the other, the other really tough bump on the road is from a completely different perspective. I dished out a third round rejection this year as a senior editor. See, you're a crappy editor. Mm. Well, yeah. So, because I saw something in the paper, and uh, the edit, the associate edit, the reviews were all strictly against. I was like, no, no, no. I think there's something there. There's something there. There's something there. And at some stage, I had to say, look, I was wrong. You know. And what yeah. made it tough is that literally half a day later, like you know, I sent it out in the morning. In the afternoon, I went to this workshop somewhere, and the author, one of the authors, was there. And I was like, I'm, I'm like, I, you know, didn't recognize at the beginning, but it's something we got to, to it. I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm really sorry. You know, this is, this is what happened and so forth. And I probably should have rejected you early. It's, it's a tough one to take. Anyway, I, I feel sorry for this. Uh, and that was an example of, of me, uh, uh, probably as an editor, dragging it out around too long. Well, yeah, I, that, that's tough because what you want to do is you want to give them a chance. So first round, you definitely want to give them a chance uh, to, you know, and then by second round, I think that, you know, you, you can still say, okay, here's, but by second round, if you're going to give them another revision, you have to have clear path to publication. It's almost like if you do A, B, and C, you're in. And then if they come back and didn't do A, B, and C, well then, yeah, then I guess you can reject third round, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, so, you know, that was a, a tough one or not a nice experience that I've had just, you know, from the other side of the, of the, yeah, of the that realm, does I suck. suppose. All right, so final question. We need to, we we need to get to the award. So final question here. I think this is just four instead of five. Doesn't matter. Twenty twenty three, new year. What are your plans? What are you going to do differently next year? All right, my plans for the next year are the same plans I always have, and then for whatever reason I don't do it. All right, and there are two personal. Right. I'm going to be really really thin and lean with like abs and uh well, fit, you're like right? you're, you're hit, hitting so, 60 that that dreams long gone man long so that gone. doesn't that never happens but it's always a goal uh and then the second thing is i'm going to be very disciplined about which research projects i undertake oh, and i'm God. only going to undertake the and then what ends up happening is i don't do that and, and i don't do the uh and here's the deal i'm getting better with the discipline and I don't take on every project, but I still take on more projects. But then looking back, I can't pick one that I would have gotten rid of. I usually have a reason for it. And then as far as my fitness, my wife makes these butterscotch cookies. And it's like, <laughs> am I not going to eat the butterscotch cookie? No, man. Or, or I see my friend at Wrecker at, in Cleveland, right? You drink a little wine or something and we go get chicken wings. You know, it's like, am I going to not do that? Nah. So I make, the, but yet I can still do just the other day. I did 14 pull-ups, strict pull-ups, no wow. kipping or anything in a row. Uh, I still work out. So I feel like I'm strong. My, my blood work and all that HDLs and LDLs and all the, the heart, it's all good. So, so I have a gut, everything else is good. I think you're fine, man. I I, I saw the, you this year. I think I thought you looked fit, uh, fit and trim and everything. So you look good and healthy and strong. So uh, well, yeah. I, you know the other the way that I interpreted what you just said is that well, you want to be more disciplined, which usually means you want to say more, no more. On the other hand, 
I still want to reserve the right to just do stuff that I find interesting. <laughs> For the reasons I want to. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yesterday, I said something. I said yes to a project, which is a hell of a work. It's not going to give me any points or it's not going to appear on the rank or whatever. And I thought that's the best idea I've heard, uh, idea I've heard in a long time. So, yeah, I'm going to yeah. do that. And no, I don't yeah. have any time or capacity for this. So, absolutely. How about you, 2023? Well, less, less meetings. It's very mundane. Less Meetings. meetings. Yeah. I uh, for the last couple of weeks because of uh, uh, life here at home, I had a cut out meetings in the afternoon, and you know what happened? Hmm. Nothing. Nothing happened. I was more productive, more relaxed, yeah. spent more time with the family, and nothing else. All right, so I'm gonna keep doing this. No afternoon meetings. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll see if I can manage that. But that's my. You know mind. what? You know what? Young Jin had me do. He said, "Just take a day with no meetings every week." And it was mostly Thursdays for me this semester. And uh, except for a couple of times, like I ended up having to teach my executive MBA on Thursday mornings. And there were a couple of other things that I had to schedule on Thursdays. Other than that, I was wide open every Thursday. And when people asked me for a meeting, I said, I can't do Thursday. So the entire day, and he said, you should always do Wednesday. So you can do all your stuff to, you know, and that it's in the middle of the week and, and whatever. And I like that. I like that a lot to just pick a day every week and do no meetings. I like you know? that. And the other thing I would like to do, I just, I just want to do more experiments, man. Experiments are just wonderful. They are fun. The, the best method, you know, it's just if you want to feel like like a real scientist, like you got to do some experiments at some stage, right? You can't just yeah. not just can't just set theory papers all the time, you know. Hey, let's do an experiment together, Wrecker. You and me. <laughs> the first, the first thing we're gonna do. This is why people are listening to us. They want to know what is the best paper of 2022. Now, I know yes. at ISIS they hand out a ba- bunch of awards. But none of them have our credentials, of course. <laughs> no. And, and, and uh, you know, funny enough, Jan van Brocke didn't win an award this year. Usually he's a, he's a, he's a safe bet. He's slipping. <laughs> JVB, slipping. But one of, uh, you know, uh, a paper from our special issue got an award. Um, yes, it did. The one that you and I, uh, of course, with uh, with Ben and Radica, we edited. We were senior editors. Absolutely. And it yeah. was uh, Sarah's and... Uh, Hila Hila and and Natalia's. Natalia. Yeah, it's a wonderful. Good on them. Absolutely. So we got a whole bunch of nominations. uh, And we we literally, we did read all of them. And I think uh, we have a, you know, we have a few clear winners, right? Uh, Last year, we had, we had two categories. We had the, we had the Trailblazer Award for setting up a new area of inquiry, like a new topic, a new phenomenon, a new theory. And the other one was the Innovative Research Method Award. Now, I think we, we have some flexibility in having slightly different categories this year, right? Yeah, I think we should still do both of those. Okay. And then I propose two other categories. Okay. Uh, a design science type category, whatever, best design science paper. Best artifact and paper. Artifact. There you go. Let's call it that. And then I want one which is like, uh, I don't know if we want to call it cleverest, but, <laughs> you know, I found... There are a couple of papers that are just like, and and one in particular I want to talk about, but but uh, they're really just capturing the the thing that I think is a really clever. People haven't talked about it, and it's a re- and and I have two papers that are candidates for for that one, but I don't know if we want to call it cleverest or or uh, cleverest move. Well, and when I tell you why I like these two papers that I want to run by you, why don't we just start with that one? Yeah, Can we do I, that. Go, go absolutely. Go ahead, man. There, here are the two papers, and I was when we were doing our our separate research on this. I found, and I know these two papers, and I just wanted to go back and look at them. In JAIS this year, uh, Maximilian Schreich, uh, Manuel Vichy, Vichy. Vichy. and uh, Helmut Kurtzmar, uh, they chronicle SAP as it goes from a product to an yep. innovation platform. And they frame it from product platform ecosystem to innovation platform ecosystem, right? Because SAP is going from selling HANA to trying to make SAP an ecosystem, right? Yep. I think that's the, first of all, the case is awesome. It's SAP. We all know SAP. The research is phenomenal. The story is like the evocative story. So, so I'm going to give that one my runner up for clever timely maybe we call it timely or something maybe the timeliest clever paper or something we'll, we'll come up with the title um so that's my runner up and then my winner for this paper is something by maria carmela 
Anosi, Elisa Mattarelli, Evelyn no Micoletta, and Antonella Martini. Okay, they wrote no a paper. Yeah. They wrote a paper in Information and Organization ah, called okay. "Logic Shift and Depletion of Innovation: A Multi-Level Study of Agile." use in a multinational telco company. Wow. And what they're talking about is how this big multinational company started using Agile in their research and development. And, yeah. you know, everyone's using Agile, right? It's everywhere. Just like in the previous, in the runner-up paper, everybody's trying to go from product to ecosystem. They're chronically one of the big ones. It was such a timely, important pay. Well, this one is like Every company's going agile. Every company's incorporating agile. We have DevOps, we have agile. And what I love about this paper, and maybe there are more out there, but it's a beautiful case study. They really dig into it, but they point out how, yeah, what did agile do? After they implemented it, it was innovative at first, but over time, it became the method for, and they say, putting out fires. So it started with navigating through uncharted waters. It ended up with putting out fires logic, right? It became incremental. They refer to it as short-termism. Uh, it totally opened my eyes. I thought it was so cool how they they point out how, and, and whether agile development is the cause or not, I don't, but it's uh, uh, agile develop morphed into this. You know what I think this is? I, I don't know this paper. I haven't heard of it. I haven't read it. I, I know the other paper, uh, roughly. But uh, this one, I think, you know what I would call it? This is the most realistic paper. That's what you're saying yeah. is exactly what I hear uh, companies telling me when and how they do use Agile. They don't yeah. do any of this R&D and all this fancy and you know this stuff. They just use it as the next project management method and do the, exactly the same thing as before, which is firefighting and solving problems yeah. and, and just having a scrum coach this time. Yeah, but I'll tell you what. I study Agile. I've worked with companies doing Agile. We don't, I guess to me, you don't see this in the literature. Maybe you see it in the folks you talk to, but I think most places, you know, the 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 agility is usually not associated with incre incrementalism, right? We don't think that way. And uh, I don't know. I love this paper. So I'm going to give this paper, uh, the uh, the uh, Anosi et al. paper, my, my kind of timely uh, paper of the year. I like uh, that. The timely, paper timely, the timely case study. Let's call them timely, timely case, case study. The timely case study award. I like that. That's a good one. All title. right. We'll call it the timely case study award, and it goes to Anosi et al.'s uh, Agile paper. And and the runner up, uh, it goes to Is Manuel Shrike and Helmut. Et al. And, uh, yeah. Exactly. Shrike. Does that sound good? Yeah. It sounds wonderful to me. Uh, like I, you know, folks, I didn't know about either the category or the papers. I, I do know the the the, the Schreig and Vishe and uh, Kretschmer paper just by happenstance. But yeah, so yeah, I'm I'm fine with this. Now let me talk about the the Trailblazer Award, right? Okay. Uh, so so last year we had uh, Aaron Baird's and Liquebe's Le Maripink's paper, and mm -hmm. uh, Alberta's and Dorothy's paper on on care, the dignity, the, the care theory. Yeah. Um, so these were trailblazing in the sense that they, you know, open up uh, uh, new areas, uh, new lines of thinking, you know, new theoretical perspectives of the fields. So I have two candidates this year. I'm not sure I want to talk about runner up and winner. I just kind of call them two winners. I have two papers that I really, really like here. One of them is by Carolina Selge. Oh, yeah. And, the uh, MISQ and paper. Ele yeah, exactly. With Elena and Jason. Elena Karahana mm -hmm. and Jason Thatcher, and they talk about bots. Now, yeah. this is fair and square, just very simply the best and most precise paper on bots, social media bots on Twitter that I've, you know, that I've seen yet. This is just an authoritative paper. This, this is how bots operate and disseminate information on Twitter. And this is a way to think about it. And this is why it's happening and so forth. It goes into wonderful detail on the technical level. It has, uh, you know, it's, it's got a nice blend of, I guess, qualitative theory development type of work with computational data to it. Um, it's also, I think, a very nice example of how you can move away from this template of here are three mechanisms and four affordances and, you know, that sort of yeah. stuff. For yeah, one yeah. thing, they got these two processes. They have two, not three. That's just, you know, yeah. there's two of them. Uh, social, social transmission and social, social alertness. alertness. They yeah. got this wonderful, yeah. you know, and then they have this really beautiful theoretical integration to see how these both things work together. And that's just a yeah. great paper, a, a really, really great Agreed. paper on a very, very important topic. And it's literally the first true substantive, you know, 
big paper on the, on this topic. So good on them. I really like that. I have to tell you, that was my Trailblazer Paper of the Year award as well. So okay. we came well, with the same Trailblazer. And I have to say that a number of our friends that nominated papers, of which I'm not sure if any of those three people, did we ask them? They're all our friends, of course, but I, I don't think we asked any of those three people to nominate anything. Uh, but I think uh, it was nominated pretty broadly by the folks who It who was asked, nominated a few so, times. And it's just, uh, it's just really, really cool. Um, so my second paper is I also very much enjoyed reading, but it's very different. Um, and I'm, uh, you know, on a on a on a on a substantive level, but also on a personal level, I'm gonna call out here a Christina and Yanis paper, Christina Alimo and Yanis Kalanikos paper in this Oxide yeah. special issue on organization design, center, data, objects, technology, and knowledge. Yeah. And and, and I'll, I'll be very, very blunt and open here. I have trouble sometimes reading Yanis papers. To you be and very me both, honest, right? yeah? yeah. So it's it's just sometimes impenetrable, right? And, and you know, yeah. but this one, this one really hooked me. I mean, the way that they talk about the role of data and really, really go through it, what it used to mean. I think that, like, what I wrote down here is this is a perfect example of really going into the conversation, understanding what has been said and advancing this conversation and really placing oh, yeah. it, not just in the, this is what the last three MISQ papers over the last two years, but really this is the history of scholarship about data and technology and knowledge. And this is where yeah. we're now, and this is how it's going to move forward. And they're going back to the 1960s. They're Absolutely. going back to the very foundational kind of information processing. And and yeah. And, and I got to say, like, you need, a, you need some time to power this paper it's not easy in by any stretch um but it's really rich it has so many ideas the only downside i see is there's so many really really good ideas you know it's hidden somewhere in pages and pages of text you know as yeah. a as a as a paper construction i was like man just break up this paper a little bit more and put out more subsections or whatever running headers something help people navigate yeah. your ideas a little bit better but this rich with ideas it's it's it screams that they know this area this scholarship not just the last 10 years but the last 100 years really really well and i found this very deeply impressive and there's so yeah. many ideas in this papers um, I wrote a, a few of them down, you know, this idea about a loss of a homogenization, meaning the loss of the makeup. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, man, data and the knowing process. There's so much stuff here, agnosticism, neutrality of data, all of these little ideas that just happen in the side sentence here and there, they can all spawn so many research uh, inquiries here. It's a really great theoretical paper, I think. Yeah. And and what they do is they're linking data with knowledge and organizing, right? And and it was always data was in the service of knowledge in the in the way you did your organization, right? The way you managed your organization. And and what they're talking about is now it uh transcends organizational yes. yeah. containers, right? It's like in our I had a paper back in 2014 where we talked it's about the organizational window. container. Yeah. yeah. And and they're talking about the and we didn't really get at data, we just talked about uh information systems right that they're talking specifically about how this knowledge kind of transcends uh data objects right knowledge in data objects uh transcends organizations and changes what we know about the role of knowledge in organizations so i think it is trailblazing i think you're right i think it is hard and i yeah. like reading this stuff and i i think Giannis is uh and of course uh uh christina, christina uh they're brilliant uh I know Christina has been publishing now for a number of years, but Giannis has been around for a while. And, and Giannis is one of the most brilliant people that I admire in our field, right? I think he's he's absolutely brilliant. And uh, and yeah, I think there is a lot to go from with this paper. So I think you picked two good trailblazers, dude. Uh, so what, we're not picking between them? We're just going to say those are our two winners? Yeah, exactly. They are two winners. They All both right. get, a, get an award in a frame or something. Absolutely. All right, I'm going to give you my innovative method, and then you pick the design. Paper. All right, let's that do that. That sound good? Yep, sounds good. All right, good. innovative method, hands down, uh, is Shayla's paper. So the I don't know if you've read uh, Shayla Miranda, uh, Dai Wei Wang, or David Wang, and Chuan Tian, with Annie Tian. And uh, it's an MISQ. Name of the paper is Discursive Fields and the Diversity Coherence Paradox an ecological perspective on the blockchain community discourse, right? They look at how blockchain evolved over the, uh, say, you know, in, in 2017, it kind of had its peak and then its crash. 
And they wanted to look at the discourse, the broader discourse. They looked in the news media. They looked on, I mean, they pulled so many different, uh, uh, they did so many different methods, right? They did a lot of topic modeling. I think it's one of the first that really used topic modeling uh, empirically in a descriptive sense, not to just uh, use their topics in a regression, right? Uh, <laughs> and then they use these Nicely topics. Put. Nicely put. Nicely uh, put. I like that. Well, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with using topics in a regression, but I think that there's more you can do with topics when you do topic modeling. And here they actually parsed out the topics. There's this crazy image they have showing the topics and the different fields moving across. You know, there are different, you know, there's like the news media, there's scientists, there are idea evangelists, and they're showing how topics moved and evolved across different communities over time. And I think it's, and and their theoretical contribution is around this coherence diversity thing. But I think the methods itself and the variety of methods they brought to bear, um, you know, I, I talked earlier in the year about computational and intensive theory construction. To me, this is like the most beautiful. It's like a detective saying, okay, what can we do? I'm using this method. I'm using that method. I'm using this method. And they're like triangulating around their right. conclusions. In the end, they did some interaction, you know, some uh, interaction plots, right? So uh, it was too cool. Too cool. Too cool. I have to, I've, I, admittedly, I haven't read this. I have not. I know which paper you're talking about, but I haven't read it. I will. I, I know that Donna will read this. But little side note here. So the AIS uh, has always had this, these 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 online resources uh, on different research methods. You know, like Mike Myers always had this qualitative regions digest something website, and um, uh, uh, Detmar and uh, Marik Boudreau they had this quantitative research. Uh, web page, an online resource for an introduction, tutorial, and you know references and seminal papers and that sort of stuff, right? So we had it for qual for a long time. We had it for quan for thirty years. Uh, the design science community has done the same. What we need now is the same for computationally intensive. We need an online resource. It's the one-stop shop for computationally intensive research, with where you just put a lot of the stuff from your editorials. Sort of like, you know, this is the way to think about it. This is from from pattern to theory, spectrum, whatever. And here are a bunch of papers that are really good examples in applications. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. where, where Shyla's papers and, and other papers would, would appear, you know, and you could say, I'll you know, do it. What do I do? Where do I put this? What do I do? Well, you just put it on any web page and then you contact AIS and say, like, just put it under your research resources. You know, on AIS net, there is a, I think, a resource page. And underneath, there is one section, one page that has the different methods on it. And it mm -hmm. needs this for computation. It's literally like a day of work, if that. Mm -hmm. And it would be so helpful. And then, you know, we, you know, people put it on ice wall or whatever, and then people have a, a, have a, a section to go to. Uh, and I think we need this for computationally intensive stuff with uh, different categories, different types, simulations here and topic modeling there and text mining there. And here's a, just a few examples, like a wiki page. That's all it needs. Yeah. All right. So for design theory. All right. I'll do yes. it. Whatever. We'll talk about it, but I probably won't do it. Maybe I will. Who knows? Maybe well, if you uh, don't have to Aaron Lindbergh. People, we have yeah. thousands of listeners. Literally, actually, we do. We have thousands of listeners now. Um, just someone please do that. And if you want to know yeah. how to get this on the AS net webpage, just send me an email. I'll help you. No problem. Yeah. Just someone please build this content. And you know Nick can 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 look at it or something and make sure. I'll that give the right you all the. I'll paper. give you all the articles. Exactly. Yeah, I'll happily right? supply all the we'll articles. I just and I'll help mm. and I'll help mm. you put it on the ISNet. Everyone will love you for it. Like I'm not. And saying I just don't want to. Yeah. yeah, I just don't want to create a website, but I'll give people all the materials. All right, Wrecker, here's my prediction for your design. <laughs> J A I S. There's oh. a design theory for energy and carbon management by. Yeah, Zampo, Mortos, Promotari, and our buddy Stefan Zeidel. Is that what you're going to pick? No, I'm not going to pick that no. one. Uh, no, but it I, says, I, so I'm looking at it. It's perfect as far as it's got a problem. It's got a kernel theory. It the then design goes principles artifact. It's got the design principles. Then it extends the design theory, which is one thing you don't see do, right? It seems like a nice paper to me. Yeah, I'm gonna pick a different one, which was uh, which I didn't know about, but uh, you know, one of our friends nominated it. It said it just is the coolest artifact, and it's true. Uh, it's a paper by Kai Yang, Raymond Lau, and Ahmed Abbasi, uh, published in ISR, called "Getting Personal: A Deep Learning Artifact for Text-Based Measurement of Personality." And folks, I'll just be very honest. This is simply this is what design science type of research should be about. This is. 
fantastic detailed technical computing algorithmic development coupled with some very careful uh, evaluations. You know, this is not Mickey Mouse stuff. This is some true artifact design and thorough evaluation. If I wanted to pick a paper and say, like, what do I have to do uh, to do really meaningful, very impactful design science and get published in top journals? Well, do more of that. Do that and forget about all the, all the other stuff. And so what what so it's their deep person artifact yes. that they're creating, right? And this deep person is a machine learning approach to personality detection. So there's like the big Prop five text, and whatever, yeah. and they're showing and there's this table in the paper where they find every single uh deep you know personality prediction artifact out there and they uh uh benchmark themselves against each one, right? There's Absolutely. theory in this and and then there are these uh, <laughs> there are these paragraphs like this. Fe- feature-based methods, including KNN coupled with LIWC categories, SVM using word engrams, gradient-boosted trees, and synthetic mon- minority oversampling and TOMET link, SMOTEC TOMEC, personality detector, as noted in our business, the, the, the LIWC, CNN1, CNN2, network, da, 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 da. it's like so many acronyms, so much work. <laughs> There's a citation after every single one of these. I mean, they are in it and they're in it to win it. And they're looking not at some lame straw man, non-machine learning uh, thing that they're beating with machine learning. No, they're getting into the weeds and they are doing a whole bunch of things I probably don't will never understand but yeah no this is some thorough stuff this is really this would be published in the in the top software engineering types of papers as well you know if you want to ask i was i, I think i told this story before i was at this workshop this year where they asked what do i have to do to get design science research published in the top journals well you gotta get your work to this level it is thorough it is comprehensive it is meticulous you know and and is it like what did you say it's not mickey mouse this is this yeah. is some true, you know. This is some really useful thing, and really thoroughly done. So well, done. it's it's incredibly hard to read. They have so many acronyms, which is another one of these software engineering things that they find yeah. an acronym for anything, and then the rest of the sentence are just H C R C N N and C N N one and C N N two and person that bird and H W L P H A N and blah, 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 blah. I have no idea, right? So you lose every every person, but it doesn't matter because the, the artifact speaks for itself. Well, you probably don't lose the people who are in it with you, right? So yeah, I yeah. think if it's a machine learning person, you're gonna get all of this, right? It's right there, you know. Uh, so yeah, beautiful paper. Abasi just won uh, best paper of of uh 2021 at isr oh, wow. for uh for a paper he did on fishing uh fishing detection right so yeah he's 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 a badass if i were doing design science i would go look at and especially anything in machine learning and design science i would just go learn and text all of, right anything that yeah, had anything well, to do with text yeah i would just go look at abasi's work uh his body of work he's he's a badass so this was the abasi uh podcast we talked about him at the beginning you liked his presentation now we gave him an award with his co-authors we need to get him on next year we will get him on next year and uh yeah i mean this is this is our final episode for this year and uh you know as usual we keep saying this people send us send us uh suggestions for what should we be talking about i give us another year nick this this is me very blunt after one year uh, one glass of what what am i drinking here australian chardonnay so i think we can do one more year but at some stage this is uh, has to end <laughs> you think so all right i think so yeah. i'm i'm a, I'll, I'll do it as long as you want to so yeah, if you right, keep then, it going yeah. i will stay with you and uh and yeah well we'll make 2023 the best year ever of our podcast we'll be we'll really clever and creative ourselves and innovative yeah, well, we got to pick some more topics. <laughs> we have more to say. Like this year, we had some a- episodes where I was really, really out of my depth. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we can revisit some of our most popular topics. Like uh, the very first podcast we did was on theory. And yeah. uh, maybe we yeah. can hit that. Maybe we can hit some others. And of course, we're always looking for suggestions from our listeners. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to um, do one call here. I want to do an, an episode in experiments. And we want to okay. have we want to have a guest, right? Yeah. Maybe, well, actually, we could ask Ahmed on that. We should have Ahmed on and talk with him about experiments. 
So Ahmed, I think is how you would say it if you were in the Middle East. He's his uh, he's from Pakistan. So for him, it's Ahmed. Ahmed. So uh, yeah, yeah. No, that's okay. But you know, we'll we'll get him on for his uh, his thing, and and his are field experiments, and they're like the A/B testing that that uh, companies are doing, right? There's online experiments. I could think of a few people that we could bring on for for online experiments and best practices there as well. So. I don't know. Let's let's talk about it. I, I, but I agree with you. Maybe an episode on experiments would be fun. And then we need Kathy Orquart back. She was one of my favorite guests we've had. Kathy, Kathy is good. She's also uh, started a grassroots initiative to reform the AIS, which is what we talked about a year ago. She nice. Did. Yeah, I saw Beautiful. that on, on LinkedIn that she put together a sort of like a LinkedIn group um, and get gets gets that going. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right, my brother, have a good holiday and I'll see you next year. Yeah. Thanks for listening, everyone. Um, this was good fun. Thanks for uh, showing your appreciation as well. We do get uh, by now a lot of nice emails, to be honest. So, uh, you know, thanks for listening. Have a nice uh, holidays, everyone. You too, of course, Nick. Uh, Happy New Year if I don't talk to you before, which I'm sure I will. Uh, and otherwise, I'll uh, we keep doing this next year. Is Dr. Decade going to take us out? Absolutely. He's going to take us out. All right. 